Hola, students. Uh, now we're ready to do the last thing for sig figs, and that's how do we multiply and divide in sig figs. All right, remember for addition and subtraction, it's the least number of decimal places. That's what makes a number weak, or the more zeros it has if it doesn't have any decimals. Those are weaker numbers. For multiplication and division, the rules change. Okay, so you have to look at what we call the number of sig figs in the measurements. Now, on the front of the worksheet, I've got the rules for telling if a number is significant or not. And the rules are really easy. It looks complicated. By the way, have you seen this worksheet before? It's mine. I wrote this probably 20 years ago as a, as a way to do sig figs very easy. So all the teachers here are using it. It's actually a really nice explanation on how to do it. Um, so read it, okay? Don't just look at it. Sometimes we write stuff because you guys are supposed to read it. Anyway, um, anything that's not a zero is significant. So all you have to worry about are the zeros. Easy, right? Now, zeros can only be in three places. They can be in front of numbers, between numbers, or at the end of numbers. So we call those leading zeros, trap zeros, and trailing zeros. Okay? And let's look at the rules. Leading zeros are never significant. If you put a zero in front of a number, it means nothing. Okay? If I asked your age, you're not going to go, Mr. Olive, I'm 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 17. Because those zeros are a waste of time. Zeros in the front of numbers don't count. Now, even if there's a decimal, okay, 0. 0.00001, those zeros on the front don't count. There's one sig fig in that measurement. Okay? They're just holding the one out there. They're not measured. They're zeros. Okay? So zeros in the front never count. And don't say, but what is that? Never means never. Okay? Uh, so they, we don't even bother with them in the front. If they're in the middle of two numbers, notice there's 5005 or 34.005. Look, it's between a 5 and a 4. If they're in the middle of two numbers, they always count. Okay? So pretty easy rules. They're on the front, never. Zeros trap, always. So the only one we really got to think about are what happens to the zeros on the end. We call those trailing zeros. They only count if there's a decimal somewhere in the number. Doesn't have to be in front or back of it, just somewhere. If you've got a number with zeros on the end and there's a decimal somewhere in that number, they all count. If there is no decimal, the zeros on the end don't count. Okay? So the examples I give you, look at 5003.00. These are trapped, they count. One, two, three, four, trailing with a decimal. Five, six. Six, six figs in that measurement. This one here, trailing zeros, no decimal. None of those zeros count. So there's only two sig figs in that number. So all you got to look at are the zeros. Count anything that's not a zero. That's a sig fig. Front never, middle always, trailing if there's a decimal. Now, once you know how many sig figs are in each measurement, all you do is you round your answer to the least number of those. So if you have a number like 35 times something times, and the 35 is your smallest number of sig figs, two, then you're going to round your answer to two sig figs. Okay? Whatever that answer is, count over two places, numbers now, not zeros, and then round it to that second place because that's, that's the rules. Weakest number of sig figs rules. Um, now, I do have a little bit more explanation on here, but I promise you I will not try to trip you with this. I could, but I'm not going to. And that is if you're doing conversions and counts, like 30 students, how many sig figs are in 30 students? None, because you don't count, or sorry, you don't measure students, you count them. Remember, sig figs are for measurements. What makes a measurement weak? Uh, 30 students is a count, it's not a measurement. The other thing are conversions. There's 12 inches in a foot, so how many sig figs are in 12? Unlimited, because it's not a measurement, it's a conversion factor. So the only thing we worry about are the measurements, okay? I won't trick you with that. I, I mean, all the questions I have, I just use measurements. I don't use conversions or counts to try to confuse you. Now, the last one is pretty simple, and you're going to love this. In scientific notation, all you do is you look at the coefficient, not the exponent. So you notice here there's 2.400. That has four sig figs. Therefore, you want four in the answer. Now, we don't even look at the exponent. Okay? Don't do anything with that. It's only the coefficient. So however many are there, that's how many sig figs there are. 
So the front of your worksheet, real simple, is just counting sig figs, right? Now I'm gonna make a quiz for you and I'm gonna put it up, it won't count, but it'll let you know if you understand what I'm talking about, okay? I'll make one for addition and subtraction and one for multiplication and division and see if you can understand how to do them. And if you do really well on the, on the practice quiz, then go ahead and fill out your worksheet. If you have any questions, feel free to contact each other or contact me and then I'll say, hey, you know, number seven is a little confusing. Did I get it right? And uh, for $10, I'll tell you if you did. Okay? I'm kidding. I'll tell you. All right? Uh, then when you're all done, on the back of the worksheet, I want you to start multiplying and dividing and rounding the answer to the correct number of sig figs. Um, and then see if we can finish off the rest of the worksheet using the rules. Now, don't forget, addition and subtraction, decimal place, multiplication and division, number of sig figs. All right? And hopefully you'll be able to get that. Let me do one example. Oh, I think I went too fast there. Let's do one example. What if I have 2.0 times 35.0? It's really just 2 times 35. So that's 70. The question is, how many sig figs here? Trailing zero with a decimal. That has three. Trailing zero with a decimal. That has two, therefore I want two in my answer. So how do I show two? Because right now there's only one, it's 70. That's right, this is another one of those cases where I'm gonna do this. They're both 70, they both have two sig figs, and that is the only way to show the answer with two sig figs, okay? So when you get your answer, look back at the numbers they gave it to you, the number of least sig figs is how you'll round the answer. All right, so try your hand on it and see if you can do my worksheet. I know you've done one like this last year. It should start coming back to you. And throughout the year, when we do calculations, we got to use the rules for sig figs in here. So you got to learn them, All right? So good luck and uh, email me or, or get a hold of me if you've got any questions, all right? All right, bye.